Hi, hello, and welcome to Cinema Express. My name is Ram Venkatesh Today we have with us a filmmaker and more importantly, cinematographer Karthik Gattamunini to talk about his career uh, and his most recently released film, Karthik AR2. Uh, hello, Karthik. Hi. Hello. Hi. So, uh, Karthik, I remember watching uh, Surya vs. Surya a couple of years ago on TV and uh thinking okay that's a cool looking film it looks uh glossy it looks cool it looks so different and i've been following you ever since uh so having you on on this show is pretty uh it's like it's special for me so thank you very much for doing this uh also that uh there aren't many interviews of yours uh so thank you uh, for giving this interview <clears throat> so uh my first question would be uh i was i was skimming through your instagram profile and i see that a lot of it is actually about traveling you are okay. an avid avid traveler so i'll connect this with karthikeya 2 and karthikeya 2 is a film that spans in uh, over multiple locations right so let's start yes. with the location scouting was okay. was that a fun process and how much command did you have in deciding like this is the location that we are going to shoot it how did you finalize okay. the location Okay, okay. And most of my uh, location work uh, mm. comes with the script. Mm. What happened in this particular film was about Sri Krishna. Mm. So, and, and um, I was not much aware of uh, Sri Krishna's uh, story after his death. Right. Uh, I know that Sri Krishna is this, that, uh, some elements of it. So, I was mm. really surprised by the fact that, oh, these many elements were there after his death. And mm. uh, they were things which are very... Uh, uh, interesting. So mm. the panic was done. So the director was telling me this is where he started. Dwaraka was all destroyed, and then they, they start going there. Where would have Uddhava gone? So that is where the whole uh, fiction started. We were uh, looking at a couple of research and all. We we found that Uddhava has gone to certain places in Amarnath, some some somewhere Badrinath, some some places. Mm. So we were trying to find a route map to it. So where could have uh, where could have been the best key key routes could be. So we found out, okay, we'll, we'll mark some places, we'll mark, so what if Govardhan Giri is one of those places he would have gone. So then I started checking how Govardhan Giri would look like. And I found it to be a very normal hill. If you mm, yeah, do a page of it. It's, yeah. it's, for me, Govardhan Giri, uh, I was seeing it from the childhood images, it looked like Krishna was holding on it and it looked like a proper uh, uh, triangular structure. Yeah. But it didn't look like that in the real life. So, okay. So, so we have to go with the cinematic fiction everywhere is what I started believing in. That's when I started becoming more, uh, what do you call, more open. Mm. Okay. Like I can do a more fiction out of it. So, I don't mm. have to stick the reality too much. So, then that's when I kind of opened up. And also, my past experience of working on different, different films have really helped. Because uh, Frozen Lake, I'd been to Frozen Lake uh, in Iceland and a couple of countries. Mm. Even Disco Raja had a opening yeah, sequence yeah. of Disco Raja has. Yes, uh, yes. So yeah. I'd, I'd been there and I was on the frozen like those films. Okay. So then we thought in those concepts of that because we have everything in our geography. Hmm. So in beautiful than Kashmir or yeah. our uh, our hmm. landscapes. So I thought, what if, there, if the final path is Kailash Parmat? Then they have to pass through all these things. So why can't we do some sequences into this? That is when the, all those ideas have actually fallen in place. So it was a lot of prep which was involved. But uh, for this film, especially what happened was the director wanted me during the scripting uh, phase as well. Okay, so that's he wanted to travel with that phase of, okay, uh, see the, now the movie is going to north. What kind of location do you think will be appropriate? Then we were both coming to a conclusion. No, no, let's, let's do this. Let, where would Anupam care that uh, Ved Patak mm. living, yeah. the kind of person he is. So we were building a route map also. Finally, while the uh, script was getting done. So mm. I ended up at that Kailash Parbat uh, phase. So uh, it's it's basically, I don't know if it is, we were, are we looking at locations or are we looking at a script? I don't know. I was just slightly confusing thing. Mm. But it was togetherness, which really helped in finding these places. So I didn't, we didn't do a very great uh, Reiki for this film. Okay. We've gone. Before the COVID wave, uh, we've gone there. Mm. We've checked, especially Dwaraka, we've scouted properly. Mm. So, 
I something which I've never visited and uh, I've only read in books and other things. So, uh, so going there and it's still Dwarka, although it's a great sacred place of Krishna, mm. it's even now it's slightly difficult to go there. You can't go directly. You have to get down somewhere, then uh, take a different route and then finally make it. So, yeah. So, Dwarka was the one which we scouted. These mountains and all, we had certain assumptions. We'll shoot it like this. We'll shoot it like this. Entire thing went for a toss when we could not uh, get the frozen lake in reality. Mm. So okay. It's not possible to shoot on a frozen lake because yeah. it's highly risky. Yeah. So that's when we start getting into details. Okay, now let us shoot on frozen lake. But yeah. I don't know how, how we... So uh, that's a different process altogether. So we how did you guys? Lot. How did you guys achieve that? We've done a lot of miniatures. Okay. Okay. The lake so, the miniature. So okay. We built miniatures out of the lakes, and uh, we've shot. Uh, it's like every 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 sequence. If you take ten shots, hmm. five would be real, three would be miniature, two would be close-ups, like that. So it was oh. all mix and match, mix and match. So we had to have proper uh, 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 kind of shot division to it. Hmm. Get it ready before go to the shoot. So and we followed it. We got it. Lucky have you uh, have you worked on miniatures before before Kartikeya too? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for this Raja, the opening avalanche was a miniature. Oh, okay. So, uh, avalanche hitting the hut and that yeah, 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 Kartikeya. yeah. Uh, practically, it is those things are very. It's it's possible to do directly as well, but the numbers are very high. Mm. So we wanted that impact. So we came up with the miniature there. That was my first trial with the miniature. This is okay. The so okay. first attempt, I think we've, uh, we've, we've, I think I would, I would rate it at 75, 80, mm. this one 90. So, uh, can you like, uh, elaborate on the miniatures? Like what were the miniatures like of the, in Karthikeya to of the hills or of yeah. the surface or what was that? Like that's no, what, very interesting. What happened is, uh, mm. See, uh, mountains, building a miniature of the mountains is easier. Mm. You have to put a scale to it first. So mm. what is the car was the first thing which is required to be miniaturized. Yeah. That, so we first, uh, that made goes miniature. down the lake, right? That was... Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh. yeah. so first thing we did was miniaturize the car. Uh. And according to that scale, we started miniaturizing everything. For example, oh, okay. mountains, what scale to it. Hmm. So now we have to build that, uh, uh, what do you call that surface? Surface, yeah. So what we built a small tank. Hmm. We put a lot of water underneath. And then we put a glass on it and painted the surface blue. <clears throat> okay. And uh, to add some texture, we put some salt here and there. Okay. So things like that are done. And uh, also there's this VFX uh, supervisor with us. So the we couldn't find a class that that long and that big. Mm-hmm. So we, we were thinking, there's ends and all you have to merge, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Even the mountains, the finish was slightly done with salt and black rocks. Mm-hmm. So they again do a little bit of magic to it. Okay. So it's all done, and then that miniature had a remote, remote control, everything, and then there's, uh, it did moves with the remote, things like that. So then, and okay, so the car moved. So the car moved. Yeah, yeah, car moved. So yeah. we shot it with the probe lens. It's, okay. It's basically, hmm. uh, the probe lenses have to be used, the macro lenses. And, so uh, what do they do? Yeah. They make things look bigger? Uh, no, no, no. The hmm. scale becomes appropriate, you know, in a way, okay. when you put it. Exactly with the you see the detail of that properly and mm. the focus also shift. So okay. yeah, probe lenses would really enhance those effects. But the problem was uh, what I didn't understand was probe lens when mm. you shoot these probe lenses when you move mm. the camera slightly it looks like a drone shot. Oh okay okay. So it was slightly tricky, you know. The, so the pans uh, had to be more it, controlled. Yeah, the pan or tilt anything would look mm. a little uh, more, uh, uh, you know, what do you call? Uh, grander and faster mm. this the, all these things were uh, uh, things coming in the way you know yeah, so a good like a learning experience lovely so uh, i was watching an interview of yours where you had stated that uh, you had received a compliment for kartikeya which was both the best compliment you had received and the worst criticism you had received saying that the film was too dark too dark yeah, literally yeah. it was too dark yeah. so what was uh, what were some of your ground rules for kartikeya 2 because obviously there uh, there are a few uh, scenes involving darkness here too for instance the, the one set in the cave or 
even the climax uh, for instance what were yes, yes, uh, the approaches for no, the second uh, film it's, it's like a tricky thing to mm. find your densities especially because uh, mm. for one i was uh, that time i was more rebellious mm. with the camera than uh, thoughtful mm. uh, more than the mind i was believing my eyes and my heart i was like that more now okay. i i think kind of balance okay that time I went like that okay I, 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 for my eyes it is looking nice i'll go like uh. that. so it was like that mm. so what happened uh, for a lot of theaters and theatrical systems and all the, the maintenance of bulbs is not mm. good or top the exposure is not proper so what happens is the density is all flicker so uh, in some theaters the image goes way to uh, dark uh, black down yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, but the advantage again for one was that sound really uh, made that more interesting yeah, yeah. so uh, one small thing uh, these blackouts you know they are very tricky you know sometimes the sound enhances the image hmm. and a lot of horror which we thought in one where sequences where people would probably not <clears throat> react to it people reacted because that of the darkness because, yeah darker density also and the sound hmm. working for it uh, but again in sequences which i thought people have had to react people didn't so it was a great lesson to me and uh, in lot of towns and villages you know the uh, sometimes the projection systems are not very upgraded or good so sometimes it goes even more dark so we have to be careful we follow these false videos and all those things on the camera <clears throat> i have mm. not done that kartik i have taken a little more care because okay. uh, from the uh, from the from the go we were very clear this movie is going to have a little mass element called god yeah so god is very bigger ma- mass element in a way yeah. a lot of people that so i was thinking of uh, making sure film mm. which is everybody right? even a kid should see it or an older person should see it so we've gone between like how much dark is needed we've gone there somewhere where i, I felt it is going too dark or something we uh, came out and made it a little more flamboyant we added a little more gloss and then we also kept it a little more real <clears throat> so it's not it it it's it's it's, it's uh, properly thought through it's optimal it's optimal yeah Yeah. so you just said yeah. something called false light or false video yeah what this, is that this couple of, what happens is when you mm. shoot a shot and then mm. there's this false pictures which they give the camera so if you just press it they'll just show you you know if this area of the area is going to be recorded properly this particular okay. area of the script frame is probably not going to be <clears throat> recorded you'll not have any detail later mm. if you want to put it up you'll have a lot of grains so mm. it's, it's kind of the kind of warning which the camera gives us so but still okay. we can go at a lot of work I've, i'm seeing on netflix and um, a lot of other platforms there is a lot of dark imagery which is very good it, mm. it adds a lot of it's nothing wrong just that you know uh, this film we thought will not go that dark mm. yeah so it was a decision because uh, sometimes i'm i'm off late i'm seeing because mostly a dark video and when you're watching it on a screen or something Mm. and then you sitting in front of a window or something at the far window is at your yeah 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 reflection goes on it and the image goes for a toss it's very so annoying these, yeah 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 and so yeah the people when they're watching they don't really uh, think of all those things you watching that reflection would probably subconsciously kill him but you would not want to move it you'll be watching it for for the people who produce those images who make mm. those images you know there's a lot of passion involved so we get a little uh, you know uh, maybe we we start thinking about it no 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 close the door close the window that kind yeah, of yeah 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 close the curtains yeah yeah so so we cool yeah. so uh, karthik you you are also an editor uh, of this film right so i was yes. quite surprised to see that because i i don't know many uh, technicians who balance both this uh, craft at least on the same film mahesh narayanan for instance is an editor he has shot he recently shot this film called malayan kunj but again he didn't edit the film that he shot so i found this okay. to be a very interesting combination tell me look i know that you have been into you, you are a filmmaker yourself you have oh, i'm sure you know about editing but yeah. how different uh, does it make when you know that you are shooting something that you will be editing like does it help you 
a catch a few extra couple of shots saying that okay i'll take this shot to maybe from a different angle so i can play it in the editing table does it change the way you film in any way no actually because uh, halfway through the film i've not taken up that job of being okay. the editor for this film okay so it was an accident uh, there was okay. one of my friends also he was supposed to be the editor of this film and uh, okay. and uh, covid time and all he was not well a little bit at that time mm. at that point so he thought okay. i'll not do it i'll i'm going to take some rest and all so then that's when we were thinking of going for a new editor and all but i was uh, i was just checking my footage editing it and checking it safe side oh, because okay. the shoot and all so i was uh i would be were actually trying to find out if everything was good and all and then mm-hmm. this this girl mm-hmm. utra was doing the online and she was doing everything and mm. keeping it in stay so mm. and that, that's when we i was doing it and then i thought okay why can't i give a try okay. so i came into this as an editor halfway through mm. it's not like okay but editing has always been my passion even before i become a cinematographer so mm. uh, for editing gives you that space where you tell stories cinematography also gives you but cinematography is more of a collaborative art form in a lot of ways you know edit you know uh, there is a there is b and a and b together can form some c something yeah. happens some kind of uh, uh, storytelling which happens in editing so which is very interesting on the flip side uh, you've asked me how the edit made you uh, uh, shoot hmm. actually it's it's the other way around okay. after i've shot i've written, oh, i i should not have shot it this way so i should okay. have shot it that way so it is more of a uh, what do you call retrospection mm. so i okay. was thinking oh i, I think i've not done it well like i should have put this shot first or oh, i should have taken another shot would have been great so shit i've okay. not done it so i just with the director uh, so i think um, we'll go and shoot one close up it will add a really good impact to this so i think we we should intercut here i think we should do this those those things are more uh, interesting you know so it happened when we we were started editing the first cut of it that's when we started seeing things over oh, no 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 we have to tempo the film up so let's take the tempo of the film down so it was slightly different so then we've corrected few things hmm. which is good it's a good a uh, process now i think i'm more uh, i think i see it in a better way because when i'm shooting i'll probably give one or two options extra from now yeah, on exactly. to better. yeah exactly yeah Usually before when I used to shoot and all, uh, uh, because of the schedules we have at a faster rate in which we shoot the films, so uh, we don't shoot options. Mm. We just shoot. Okay, now um, we decide a trick. Okay, let us start like this. So mm. why can't we do like this? We st- just exactly do that. Out of which an editor cuts and makes a film out of it. So he has a limited uh, area to play in usually. so they do a good job with the frame trimming and a lot of storytelling or they take it off or they merge things things like that but to uh, for them to play around or something you, know, you have to give them a little more options especially films like this where there is a lot of journey involved you moving here there so these kind of things you know it, it it requires a little more options to being given super did you uh, were you forced to let go of uh, yeah. some of your favorite shots on the editing I, table yeah I, I had to. I had to. <laughs> I had to. But uh-huh. uh, the first first cut will have all the shots. Yeah. First cut of uh, the edit would uh, always have all the shots. Then uh, when me and director or uh, or one more uh, editor like Uttra was there, so mm. we all sit together, see it. Then we would see. Oh, this is really uh, taking away the story. Let us take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Uh-huh. So that process happens. <laughs> so. yeah we we've cut off a few things but not much uh, this film was we thought it will it will go to our 20 something mm. we ended up to our 10 to our 12 mm. that that so we were right in control actually we were not taken off much whatever was there was there was filming in real locations a challenge yes 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 because uh, uh, see uh, west side of the country has a sunlight uh, coming in at slightly Yeah. Later. Yeah. Till seven, seven thirty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thirty-eight, and then you you start shooting, and then uh, in the afternoon, by by, for example, that bush sequence. Mm. By afternoon, it becomes all white. Nothing. Mm. There's no yeah. top light hitting the. Yeah. It's all bouncing mm. in, and there's no shade around. People cannot hide anywhere. There are no skimmers also. Mm. Short. 
in a place like that that run of catch that white yeah that sequence. white desert yeah and, yeah yeah that white yeah, yeah and uh, things like that were very difficult to shoot <clears throat> for mm. uh, for all of the group but we all uh, maintained ourselves together so we used to it's it's important to uh, get together by evening and then have a good chit chat yeah. uh, have some good and then pump up the energies and then go back tomorrow because uh, what happened was gujarat was the longest schedule and we didn't cut off from gujarat we went to manali so we were shooting in a very hot sun mm. to a temperature which uh, extreme minus yeah. and uh, we've gone to manali that time we, we thought it's it's a good summer time march time it will be nice march april uh, so it will uh. be cool then what happened there was a big snowfall that happened yeah and two days we could not shoot we nobody could come out and uh, the budget would probably cross if we don't continue to shoot so we took the uh, uh, risk of shooting it so all those shots which you have seen uh, about uh, nikhil especially walking on the mountain mm-hmm. all of them are no fall was also real we didn't oh. light it up or do anything we just used a little bit of bounce board to give some uh, face fills but we've gone like that raw so we thought it lacked something we've not even asked the we've asked all the actors to remove the makeup so that they look like they've traveled little so things like that so yeah so it was a challenge not mm-hmm. just for me for the whole crew so yeah but for, for for the cinematographers you know when you're shooting in landscapes like that it's it's a, it's a blessing in a way you know and by the end of the day you'll be very happy oh I yeah i shot that feeling of shooting nice shots especially in outdoors you get that feeling more often than uh, in in the regular locations so that way i was always happy thing was everybody was getting exhausted mm. so there has to be somebody by the time the pack up is done to get that exhaustion down so the whole team has to uh, has to be around and have that vibe and this film did add that so we go it was superb so cinematographers like you just said they often say that white is their worst enemy the color white and when you are shooting in that white desert like you just with that all that top light how did you control the lighting so no, um, i i feel so you know sometimes when you uh, when you are in a situation where you have, nothing is in your control i mm. my thing to go ahead with what is natural mm. if it is burning let it burn okay if it If it is not burning. Let it be. Let us shoot it that way. But it uh, in in a situation where it is not under control, that is what we could probably do. We try for a lot of alternatives, or you have a particular way you have to go convince the uh, director, the production, everybody that you know. I think uh, evening light would be great. Can we bring the scene to the evening times? But then actors will be under a lot of pressure because they have to deliver it in two two and a half hours. so it's a difficult call for the director as well because uh, if if he puts a lot of pressure on the actors end of the day it is a performances which really matter of course the cinematography everything counts but if the performances are being pressured you no know, it comes out uh, as a negative to the whole film so we have to find a way so we sometimes the director have given me that freedom of okay go shoot it at 4 o'clock you know, okay shoot it but if i cannot complete you'll have to shoot again tomorrow at 4 o'clock something like that so we find a found ways to get what we want as well as what uh the actors and directors also want so sometimes it doesn't work for example butch is a complicated location a kach yeah. is a complicated location yeah. because it's a little bit of uh, army and other permits which are involved so you have to shoot it when you go uh, it it depends so mm. uh, the economics and other factors as well so right. probably if I Well, I I would want to do it the other way around as well, but I'm happy the way it is. Super. So, uh, what's your favorite sequence in Kartikeya two? Uh, Kartikeya two would be the Anupam Kher sequence. Hmm. Because uh, the reason was we have shot that whole sequence in one day. Oh, okay. And uh, the other sequence which I really liked was uh, that uh, Nikhil. Uh, nikhil bhai walking for the kankana uh, between mm. the yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. between lot of snakes snakes the yeah. Of, yeah that was one sequence which i really that was also shot for one day oh so both the sequences shot one one day so there was we were shooting this at a very high pace mm. because we had only one day of uh, anupam sir's time 
and that set was hugely lit up and uh, we and we thought we'll shoot it for two days but we finished in one day these two sequences were slightly tricky because mm. uh, i don't care uh, a sequence slightly by the end of the sequence the tempo of the camera also starts to get faster mm-hmm. yeah when it starts to talk it's slightly slower by the end of it it gets uh, uh, higher with the tempo and also when the, when uh, nikhil bhai is reacting we use a lot of pans tilts we did everything that was to make it dramatic uh, More, more dramatic and yeah that's what we felt would work i don't know if it is really uh, it does not that way i think yeah i hope so okay so i'm not going to like ask you uh, to like i'm going to name three of your films and you have to tell me what is one new thing that you applied in that film and what did you learn yeah. from that film first is okay. ninukori okay ninukori Mm, I think is I think it's it's the principles of Balu Mahendra that I've really uh, applied onto that film, mm. and I've learned being simple is not easy. Mm. So the film had some of the most simplest shots, like mm. you know how to keep your camera. <clears throat> so just a slight profile would do a lot of difference. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. A straight shot would do a lot of difference. You have a lot of restriction also. Sometimes you can't keep the camera very low or. it wouldn't really work for films like that there there has to be a certain sensibility and simplicity to it and you understand what the character is thinking as per it in 360 you have to place one particular uh, angle to it and that has to bang on work and the actor emoting should be seen <clears throat> in a different uh, space so so ninugori was more of an actors film so Uh, as a cinematographer i think i've learned to take one step back <clears throat> and not overdo things mm-hmm. keep it simple and set. let let people see what the actors are really feeling what is he really thinking about what is his pain what is his anguish or what is his uh, you know, what is he really thinking so mm-hmm. i wanted people to be with the actors more than the landscape or something and there was only one sequence in inquiry which we went slightly wider and landscape oriented that was this last song where uh, the car uh, the car star song yeah. because that, mm. that sequence where they are in a car the world is beautiful they are in a car all of them having problems with each other mm. so we wanted a good analogy to be shown the distance world. the distance they have between each other yeah yeah they are all near and staying in a car and the world is so beautiful mm. you don't see it you are inside the car having problems with each other so we thought it will it will look nicely poetic so yeah one thing i really understood after that film was understanding the simplicity that that happened while we were shooting it it didn't happen while i prepared for it when i prepped on that film i wanted to shoot it very beautifully like that but when i started shooting it i understood keeping it simpler as the best thing so yeah it's the simplicity of shots now that you have said that you have used this called balu mahendra's principle what are these principles and what are your other visual uh, <laughs> like that principles is uh, i would say see for example if a character would be thinking of something he would probably do a profile of it so you don't see one half of the face mm. so when you don't see one half of the face you start to think what is he exactly thinking mm. so as as an audience you are basically being uh, 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 eaten slowly mm. you really grabbed slowly like you you getting into that story slightly so if i open up straightly yeah, i think probably it would not be the same <clears throat> so he would do applications like that psychologically tempting the audience for example there is a sequence in ninukori in the mm. climax especially when uh, murli sharma garu and uh, nani garu are both talking that monologue park- yeah yeah ha, okay okay yeah, ha, ha. at the mm. park bench Mm. Uh, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Mm. If you see that scene, uh, that scene is all shot in profiles. There's no straight close-up because mm. both of them are expressing guilt. So uh, he's saying, "My daughter is uh, is would have been great if she married you." And this uh, this guy is saying, uh, "No, no, no. He's the right choice for your daughter. I'm wrong." So both of them are expressing guilt, and that is the only scene where they both are getting connected. So we thought bridge is a good place to connect. it wow. connects two things uh, right there is slight slight uh, subtext which you can add so these were usually uh, predominantly done during balu mahendra's uh, films 
you know he does these kind of things more often mm-hmm. but, uh, i i'm not used to those kind of things so right. uh, while i was doing this film i used to understand and see his films and understand what exactly he is doing so uh, i just name it as varun mahendra's principles but i'm just saying <laughs> oh, <laughs> i don't know okay. if people are not no no i'm just yes. i was just curious yeah. to know what's your understanding of this yeah, uh, second yeah, so, uh, ah yeah ah or is uh, some films are predominantly directors uh, mm. uh visions with yeah. a different taste mm. uh, this particular guy prashant verma has a very interesting uh, taste mm. he wanted the whole film to have good palace he wanted colors to represent emotions mm. he wanted uh, everything in the set to represent something Mm. so the whole set is present something that so, so uh, that it is all happening in kajal's brain yeah, yeah so in a way so he wanted everything through colors so we had to work on a color wheel so which color represents which character so uh, nitya menon and isha's characters represents the certain uh, mm. colors so we went for a slightly pastel mm. colors uh, black and yellow represented regina's and- story um slightly sini uh, sini uh, australasers and uh, uh, a mam story was slightly science fiction so mm-hmm. all these stories are different colors and all of them blend into one tonality in the end so it was it was about uh, finding emotions with colors mm-hmm. so it's a different experience altogether because you know even the actors were wearing small small costumes a small ring also has to be in the palette if any actor would wear something out of the palette something which peeps out of their body or the small thing it is not falling in the palette you would take them off so take that off and then put it in the palette so it was properly done with uh, uh, care you know the designing the art it's it's a beautiful uh, example of production design hmm and design is not just uh, art direction or something it's like all storytelling and, yeah the uh, story uh cinematography the lighting the actors and the whole set design everything coming together and then you see it that's that's what is ah uh, for me so it's it's a very very uh, uh tasteful and very uh deeply prepped up film yeah it shows it so, clearly shows yeah clearly yeah. shows disco raja disco raja is the most uh, uh innovative film i've done Mm. especially the retro right. portions yeah although it didn't work and all but mm. uh, i have no regrets about it because uh, the director is amazing i love uh, uh, vi anand's uh, way of directing as well because uh, there is a slab where you know humans are being brought back to life yeah, yeah so we had to create a whole lab it's all fictional nobody knows how the human being taken back to life so you create a fictional lab. so there is a lot of fiction involved when disco raja is coming back to life he shot it in an, an, an abandoned church which re- kind of represents this is coming back there is resurrection so, yeah yeah so and then we shot that whole retro portion with mm. those typical experiments and then we've shot the film uh, in iceland and things yeah. like that first opening sequence where he's taken but, so there there was a lot of canvas to it <clears throat> there was a lot of experiments which were happening because even uh, that sequence where uh, ravi garu is hung in the uh, yeah yeah tube this tube so it had to be carefully done because there's a water interacting with him and he yeah. had to be there so a lot of things was a journey into unknown mm-hmm. disco raja was more of a journey into unknown i i didn't know what to do so i had to start with some detail i had to like okay lab how would that lab be mm-hmm. so we'll have some details about it uh, then the director would say probably there be a big test tube like that so why only one test tube can we have to we'll <clears throat> so things like that <clears throat> so we go into the detail part of it where would people mm. stand and open where would the console be so uh, things like that then we start working with the art director mm. and so it's, a, it's it's very innovative i'm telling you is because uh, people will not believe it if it is not uh, mm. processed like we don't process it properly and we don't analyze it properly thinking this is where the console is this is where he is operating and if we just cheat the people it doesn't work that way so yeah. it had to be properly done even for the retro there is his costumes involved so how would the 70s guy and this fellow is even though if he is in 70s he was slightly advanced yeah so he would 
little style like uh, style and things to him so how do we how how does his look uh, his house look like mm. things like that so it was a lot of thinking going on behind what would be the character who would cheat him be he would probably be a casino owner so mm. things like that is what uh, makes that film very innovative you know there was a lot of thought in it the yeah. character thought was and then we had to to bring that thought into life we had to go through a big process so yeah. it's a very very interesting and innovative process that was so this was is a very interesting process mm. end of the day uh when films like that don't do well you feel a little exhausted mm. nothing much but uh, a little bit of exhaustion takes you in so yeah right this score is a very for me mm. it says like i really love the whole biryani sequence and how it's edited yeah, sure. i one of my favorite sequences uh, that's in my recent yeah. okay now uh, what's next karthik what's next you have dhamaka coming up and yes yeah and um, i'm working on a smaller experiment okay an experiment i'm working on it's experiment a film that you are writing no no i'm working on one film i'm shooting it okay so, okay that is another one it's a small experiment i we thought we'll do it it's a oh, high okay. strength of film oh, okay so that is halfway through so dhamaka is ready for release so oh, okay dhamaka is done dhamaka is done Yeah, it it has another ten days of shoot. Oh, okay. So that be- is it? Is this the first time that you are shooting an out and out masala film? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> What's how is yeah. working on that genre has been like? Because it's often called the low angle cinema, right? Uh, no, not like that. I think it's it's more to do with a lot of uh, dialogue. Mm. It's it's more of a dialogue based film. Mm. So there's a lot of. the actions that are happening the timing of it is slightly different mm. so there's a cut in world and then the actors also uh, do it in a different way it's slightly it's a different way of uh, performing and it's a different cinema it's it's not easy though i i, I know that you know um any uh, yeah, whether it is a sensible film or whether it's a so called art film or mm-hmm. so called i don't know all these uh, differences with people um, tag along but mm. each film has a different syntax slightly <clears throat> mm. so we fall into a slightly different syntax where you know the uh, the tempo of the film is not uh, consistent it is slightly you know there will be a song coming in and there will be some nice uh, action happening yeah. and there is romance that is happening there is yeah. a lot of fun happening and it is diff- you you can see that energy when you shooting it Mm. it is something where you see the energies were shooting it for example um, when we are shooting a film like kartikeya uh, there is a lot of energy but when you see it as a whole you see that uh, full time energy uh, but but films like dhamaka you see that uh, instantly you know on the set you see ravi garo with this uh, very high energy performances yeah. all that uh being that energetic it's a different experience oh, so okay. yeah yeah Lovely. and when when are you returning back to direction i know this is a question that you are asked a lot but when when is that happening yeah, is that yeah. happening anytime soon i think uh, goes well i think i should be directing very very soon so Super. and the confirmations are clear <laughs> okay. it is better i don't it so i hope i do it very soon so Super. yeah So I'm looking forward to Damaka. Looking forward to that that experiment and your director as well. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.